Hey everyone, this is Evgeny and we are in another episode about line graph memory. And today we'll dive a bit deeper into the ways how you can update and work with your memory. Just to recap what we are doing, we were working with user profiles in the last lesson and we created a schema for the profile. So we have a lot of fields and we have a description here which is useful because because it provides the LLM, the model, some hints about the model, how to use it. And last time we were using this structured output, so-called. So uh, let me define the skill first. So we created our structured model that was aware of user profile. And having that, we can, we can provide the model, the user profile, a structured output configured here. And then we can try to extract all the information from the message. And if you take here, uh, we have the JSON back, which contains the user profile. So there's the name, profession, seniority is unknown, uh, languages, and so on, and so forth. And this is something we did with structured output. Well, while it was working, in general, it's a bit naive approach. And uh, that's not how you would do in production these days, because this approach has some drawbacks. And in general, uh, there are no structure at all. So the thing you're trying to force your model to pro process the data and generate the structure JSON. And one really a uh, huge improvement here would be to use tools. And the one I'm going to show you today is called Trust Call. And this is almost from LangChain, LangGraph. So it's kind of a native library to the framework. And look at that, how it works. So you implement, uh, you import the create extractor from trust call. And what's happening next, uh, again, you pass a model and then you define a tool and tool is your user profile, meaning the format of the object. And then you have back trust call extractor, this kind of model as well. But it's aware of the tool, it knows how to parse it and it knows a lot of different things under the hood, which the normal tool from model itself doesn't have. So what's happening next, we, we do the same invocation mechanism. We have a human message with the text and uh, take a look at that. It's not a surprise, right? It's the same uh, tool callback we have. There's a lot of attributes. And if you want to see it in more detail, so this is the user profile that was created by, uh, by this library trust call. Right here, and if you need to uh, to have it not as a user profile, but rather than JSON or as a dictionary, you can also convert it like here, and you have the same. And you might want to ask here, like, what's the, what's the point here, right? And the point is that this library can update the JSON for you, so you don't have to rewrite it all the time. And this is happening because the tool can generate a JSON path. Uh, snippets for you, so you're applying, you don't, pro, uh, you, you don't get back the normal JSON being your object, but you get back only changes for this JSON. And first, they're much smaller in the size, so you're paying less. And the second, uh, the risk is that something is forgotten, is really zero here, because you have patches and you have to apply these patches to your final JSON, and that's it, right? And this is also, it's happening automatically, so you don't have to apply something manually. And uh, let me explain and show it to you. So we have a profile here. Uh, we have an update data, for example. Uh, I can also develop in Kotlin and React.js and we are collecting profile of a developer. And there's a prompt to update the memory to incorporate the information from the following conversations. And this is the syntax of it. So we have a messages the same as before. We have this uh, message queue, message list of uh, our command and conversation as well. But this is the new thing. We have existing key where we are providing the older profile. And this one, it was here. It's a JSON and this is the old profile. And we are saying, okay, please do. You have this, uh, since this trust call extractor is aware of the format because we defined it here, right? So this trust uh, call extractor can extract information about user profile, what's happening under the hood from this message. And then it says, okay, but then you have to update uh, your JSON existing one, which is there. And the extraction information is in, in, in a way of uh, JSON path. So then Trust Extractor would apply this path to your original user profile and return back the result. Uh, and again, the rest is the same. So if you give it a try and see it, you'll have the updated profile. Well, it looks the same. And 
uh, like Java and here Java Kotlin and framework React.js somehow was classified as a framework as a language, but that's another thing, right? And again, uh, it's a very tricky thing because if you try the same approach with uh, the normal structured output, the result most probably will be the same again because models are getting better and better with every day. But uh, again, uh, we are talking about production usage, right? And in production, you have to do some optimizations anyway, like you have to update your profile, not rewrite it all the time, and, and over the time, this approach is much better. So keep this in mind that this is kind of the way you should go when you're working with the models. And why it was critical? Well, because now you're aware we have this uh, mechanism for partial update our user profile, and so we can rewrite our chatbot with profile updates, which we created in the previous lesson. And let me compile it first, so you see to refresh your memory. And what's happening here, we have a chat session, then we would extract the information that's relevant to user profile, and update our memory and then finish. And the next time we are again in chat mode, we have the user profile ready because it's a long-term memory. Uh, so this uh, user profile helps us to reply better with better quality sensors. Uh, and uh, again, we are updating memory and saving it here. So it's exactly the same as we had uh, in user profile lesson before. But what's the difference here? We have to update the update memory, not, that's clear, right? And this is what's happening here. I'm not going to go through it, just uh, if you don't understand something, just take a look at the previous lesson. You're like sorry over there, every each line here explaining, but I'm talking about only changes. So in update memory, uh, what we have here, we have the profile content, this is the same, and then we have this update user profile using the user's chat history. And we do have the history already. And then it's interesting because we have two cases, like if we don't have any profile content, if this is the first time and we don't have any memory about the user, then we have this trust call extractor and we just generate in the first time the object. And otherwise, if the profile already exists, we need to update it, so not create from the scratch, we, we have this existing and we are providing user profile. And why it's happening? Well, because uh, when you're updating the user profile, the trust call expects that your user profile object is fully created, maybe uh, meaning that maybe it's empty, but you have every single field there. And it's not the case for us because with the first call, uh, we have nothing practically. So if you don't have this one and we just call it here, then this one would be complaining that uh, some properties, for example, that uh, Kotlin or React.js, uh, it was intention to put it somewhere with JSON path and the path was not there. So that's the message you will see. So that's why we have these two cases. And the rest is the same, right? We're just extracting from native profile a model dump, and we saw this already in the previous snippet here. And that's it. The rest is exactly the same, right? So how it works, uh, the same, we have, hey, I'm Evgeny, junior software engineer, I need to help, and a lot of information about myself. And here we have a conversation, and take a look at that. We have a create profile. Uh, this is something I put, I forgot to mention uh, for showing you, we have this create a new profile and a big profile. So that was the first time and we created a new profile here. And if you take a look at the profile, what's there, we can see a lot of data, like we have the name, software engineer, junior Java, Spring Boot, and the current project, and no skills. Well, that's not a question why I don't have skills, but not for this lesson, right? And none is our current interest. And then in another thread, a uh, new conversation, I'm saying, okay, but you know, I'm also using Kotlin and I don't get something like about security configuration my project. And I'm running again the session and take a look at that. And we have the continuing conversation, it knows my name because we have long-term memory, it knows something already about me, like uh, the project I'm currently working on, right? And it provides some advices, and this was an update profile because uh, it was the second round already. And if I check the long-term memory, okay, we have a Kotlin here. And okay, current interest appeared as well. Like I'm interested in security configuration setup. So this was the, uh, the ways, uh, we went through several ways how to, how to you can store your long-term memory. And again, uh, the 
most uh, useful approach you find in internet is this structured output but again keep in mind this is very naive approach just for learning uh, you will never do in production in production you want something really mature and more stable and today we saw this library the name is trust call and it allows you to not only to regenerate your structured outputs but it can it's more stable because it's tooling and it allows you to do the partial updates there are a lot of more uh, that this library can do for you but um, well for now it's enough i think the information for you and again keep in mind these ways because we are going to use these techniques and this library in our future lessons so you need to have understanding why we are doing that and it was me Evgeny uh thanks for watching and sticking with me till the end and i really appreciate if you ask any questions or leave a comment about what you think about that and i will see you next time in the next video about lung graph see you and bye bye